Hello. In this video, I wanted to walk you through the programming language that's built into the text adventure tool. This language is very simple, uh, but it turns out that's all you need in order to make a working text adventure. You don't need anything particularly complicated. So I'm going to walk you through uh, how this programming language works and wh what it's got built into it. Uh, it does support variables. Variables are just little pieces of data that describe your game. So the score, the health, um, those are variables. You can add your own variables um, to track things that the game was not, uh, that the little tool is not inherently designed to track, which is nice. Uh, but um, variables uh, can only store certain values. They just store integers between 0 and 255, right? Why 255? Well, uh, internally, the system is using one byte of memory uh, to store a variable, and it turns out that in 8 bits or one byte, 255 is the biggest number that will fit. So um, all, all your numbers have to be less than 255, which it turns out is really not, not much of a limitation. That doesn't impose a problem on you. Um, what else? There are some built-in variables. Moves is a built-in variable. That just tracks the number of commands the player has entered. This is there so you can track time. Let's say you know, you're trying to escape from Pompeii or something and the volcano is going to explode 100 turns into the game. Well, then you can say if the moves is 100, print the volcano starts to rumble and then you can make all sorts of other stuff happen. So moves is there for tracking time. Um, there's a score. Text adventures generally used to have a score. So as you collected treasures or killed monsters or made it past barriers in the game, your score would increase. So um, you can track your score. There's a built-in variable called score. Uh, health the starts off at 100, uh, and obviously you can make this go up or down. You know, if the player eats something poisonous, the player could, uh, you know, lose 75 health or something like that. You could subtract away from your variable. Uh, and notice the built-in variables begin with a dollar sign. I'm not sure why I did that really. I think it was just to differentiate them between from object names or the names of variables that were added by me. So. Um, it's important that you put the dollar sign in front of any of the sort of built-in variables. Uh, turns without light. Um, this is sort of, might seem like an odd one, but uh, rooms can be dark. Let's say you're crawling through a cave system, uh, and you don't want the player to endlessly, and, and the, the light goes out, or the player doesn't hasn't found the flashlight or something. Uh, you may just want to kill the player after a certain number of turns and put the player back at a good starting point so the player can then go try to solve the game the right way. So it's a way of um, tracking whether the player has been lost in the darkness. That's um, just because light puzzles seem to be a staple of text adventures. Um, this is a, this may seem like a strange one. Dobj or dobj. What is that? That's the ID number of the direct object for the sentence uh, that the player just entered. So if you want, if you for some reason have some scenario where you have to say if the direct object or if the object of the sentence was uh, the lamp or the sword or something, you could check that from the code. It's stored in a variable called dobj. And there's an indirect object to, as well. Uh, so, um, like put the lamp in the box, right? The box is the indirect object of that sentence. So the ID number of that object would be um, uh, stored in that variable. And uh, why 255? 255 is a flag that says not set. So if um, the, you just type look, well, there's no direct object in that sentence. So the direct object would be 255, which um, also corresponds to the number negative one um, when you're dealing with um, uh, binary. So, so it, 255 is just a flag that says this is an invalid value. But when you type in a sentence that has valid words in it, those numbers will, will be there. Um, and game over. So there's a game over variable that is built in. Uh, the game doesn't actually do anything with it. Um, it's just there for you to, to use as you see fit. Uh, and it starts off as zero. And I'll show you some code later that uses the game over variable. OK. Um, variables don't apply to any particular object. They, are just, they just refer to the game in general. But um, there are two things on objects that you can manipulate or test. And those are attributes and properties. So attributes are. Uh, integer values that are attached to objects that describe those objects. And again, they're just one byte per attribute, so they can have values between 0 and 255. So let's look at the attributes of an object. Um, here they are. So you can, an object tracks who its holder is, that's its parent. So if the player has a lamp, the holder of the lamp is the player. Uh, if the player is in a room, the holder of the player is that room, right? So it's a way of 
for every object to know what object it's in or what object um, contains it. Uh, the description is the ID number of the description of that object. Uh, initial description is probably something you're not really going to change or test. Uh, and the initial description is how an object is immediately or de described to a player the first time the player sees it. Um, the next thing here, these are all the direction attributes. It is possible that you might want to change a directional attribute uh, of a room. So let's say if the player uh, pushes a button in one room, you could change the, you know, the north attribute of a different room to be a, a different room. So you could you can change the way your rooms are connected. You can open and close you know, doors between rooms by changing the direction attribute of a particular room. Uh, and then also objects have mass. They have a mass attribute. So uh, you can set how heavy objects are and uh, limit that, that will limit what the player can carry. I think there's a 20 20 pound limit or something on what the player can carry. So um, as the player starts collecting more and more stuff, if the total inventory weight exceeds a certain, exceeds 20, the player will just start dropping stuff by accident. So um, there you go. So these are the built-in attributes that you can test uh, from code. Uh, in addition to attributes, we have properties. Oh, okay, so sorry, here's an example. Uh, so let's say you want you have an object called lamp and you want to set its description to something new. The lamp is tarnish, tarnishing, tarnished, that's, uh, but functional. Um, Got to fix that. So I could set this uh, attribute to a, uh, a string and uh, I could set it to another room. I, I, could set, uh, I could set it to an integer, right? So and this thing on the right side of the equal side, it could be a, a string, uh, a, a room number, or a room ID number, it could be an integer, it could be, um, I could use, set it to a random number. Uh, I could set it to uh, another attributes, or another object's property. I could say the lamp.holder equals player.holder, and then the, layer, the lamp will be in whatever room the player is in, right? Maybe I've got, or I've got some monster that follows me around, right? The monster.holder equals player.holder. The monster will always then be where the player is. So that's how you set those things. Uh, properties. Properties work exactly the same way, uh, except that the properties can only be one or zero. Generally, you are going to be um, testing these rather than setting these. Um, the built, the functions, the, the engine itself does uh, the setting and the, the flipping of these bits. Um, but these are these are little bits of information on objects that you can test to see uh, whether or not. Um, a, person, a, a particular property is true. So objects can be supporters. That mean, means you can put things on them. Containers, you can put things in them. Scenery objects are not explicitly listed uh, in a room. They're just sort of quietly there to be looked at. Um, portable, I don't know, you might want to toggle that on and off. Um, hard to see. Um, Hard to see the situation for that though. So the, these are mostly managed by the, the, the game itself. However, you can go in and test them and, and yourself. So um, they and they work the same way the attributes do using that dot operator, which we'll, we'll get to before, again. So here we are at the dot operator. Think of the dot operator as being apostrophe s. So let's go back to our earlier example: lamp dot holder, lamp dot mass, lamp dot description. There, think of that dot as being the apostrophe S, the lamp's description, the lamp's holder, the lamp's mass. So um, that is a very common um, uh, thing that you will see. And you'll see that in JavaScript. You'll see that in C Sharp. You'll see that in C and C++. Um, the dot operator kind of indicates um, containment. Uh, so think of it as just, just think of it as being the apostrophe S and you will be fine. Um, let's see how this all fits together. So um, what when it all comes together is when you start testing conditions and then based on the results of those tests then you start calling functions or, or setting setting those other attributes so here I'm testing the variable moves to see if it's three and notice when you're testing for equality it's the double equal sign um, notice that the expression two has to be in, in parentheses so if this condition inside of the parentheses is true the stuff inside the following curly braces will be run so if, if moves happens to be three this text will get printed out to the console. Uh, what if moves isn't three, then nothing will happen, right? So um, there you go, that's, that's just how these, these uh, if statements work. This is a very, very primitive language. It doesn't even support and and or. So you can't say if moves is greater than three and less than five, do this. Um, there are ways to do that by putting if statements inside of other if statements. So uh, again, very, very simple language. It does not even support and and or. 
Uh, here's another one. So let's test. Here we're testing the, our global health variable to see if it's zero. Print line looks like you've died. Print line. Uh, let's try this adventure again. And then set the player's holder to two, right? So two is actually the first room. Zero, object zero is off screen. Object one is the player. Object two is the first room. You could look at that uh, in the, in, you'll see that in the, in the tool. So if with, we're, oh, you know, we could do also here is, oops, um, set the health back to 100. That's, that would be a very good thing to do there. Um, this is just an example, but, but um, that would be a, a good thing to do. So we've got the, a print line command that'll dump text to the console and we can set the player, we can move the player around by changing the player's holder attribute. And we should also set health back to zero because what would happen is the next time this game came around, processed a command, it would say, oh, health is zero. Looks like you've died. Let's try this again. All right, so unless we set health back to 100, um, we're going to keep seeing this message. So that's an example of what an if statement looks like. If this condition is true, do the stuff in the curly braces. And notice when we're testing for equality, we use the double equal sign. When we're assigning, we use a single equal sign. Now, again, that's standard programming syntax. Um, here's another one. Um, you know, if the score is equal to 100 and the game isn't over, well, now, now the game's over, right? So print line, you've achieved full score. Congratulations, you're amazing. Then set game over to true. That way, the next time this code gets run, game over will be, um, this condition will be false and we won't see this message again. So um, it, that's just to prevent the, the game from saying, you've achieved full score, you've achieved full score, you've achieved full score on every, on every successive turn, right? So the, the takeaway here is that you can put if statements inside of other if statements and that, that's a very powerful technique. Um, so, okay, let's, let's take another look, um, at an example. Here is, um, an example of an else if statement. You can chain these things together to handle various possible scenarios. So in this case, it says if health is greater than 75, print, you're feeling great. Else if health is greater than 50, print, you felt better. Else print, you're feeling weak, right? So, um, it's going to print out one of these, um, it's going to evaluate one of these three cases. One of these three things will be true, and it will, and that's whichever case is true is the one that's going to get run. So if our health is greater than 75, we'll print you're feeling great. Otherwise, if our health is greater than 50, print you felt better. And then if the, neither of those were true, it'll fall through and go to the else statement and say, you're feeling weak, right? So this is a way of chaining uh, tests together to handle various possible inputs. Um, one thing I just wanted to mention here is that if is always supposed to be lowercase, it's just that PowerPoint is irritating and um, uh, also and seems to be lowercase or seems to auto be, be auto correcting that. Uh, also, the print line is supposed to be lowercase. That's a mistake on my part. Um, operators. What operators does the thing support? It supports equal, not equal. That, that's what that means. Exclamation point equal means not equal, uh, less than, and greater than. Those are the four operators that the if statements support. Uh, there's some built-in functions to help you um, to interact with the game. So print line prints out a text message followed by a carriage return. Uh, print just prints out the message to the console without the carriage return. Rand with a number in the middle will return you a random number between zero and whatever was inside the parentheses. Uh, if you want to add or subtract a value to a variable, you can use the add function. Uh, if you want to subtract, just make the number negative. So it's like if the player does something dumb uh, or something you're trying to discourage, you could subtract um, a certain amount from the player's score. Uh, look will print out the room's uh, look, um, the description of the room that the player is currently in. There, there are reasons why you'd want to do that. Um, let's say you want to teleport the player, right? You could change the player's holder attribute to move them and then call look, and then it would print out the description. Um, move is just, is there in case um, for some reason you are trying to verify whether the player is allowed to go in a certain direction. Uh, and if the player is, then you actually want to make the move command the player was originally trying to make. You're probably not going to use that very much, um, but it's, it's there in case you need it. Uh, what else? Um, I think that's about it. So let's just pop open the uh, interface here and just take a look at some code. Here is uh, a test project I've been working on. And so here's what it actually looks like inside the console. Uh, so if this is, if the player is at top of hill, right? So top of hill is, is the name of a room. And, and then, and that goes, it'll, if that, so that's true, then we'll go into this inner block here. And then we're going to test, is game over zero, which means false, right? So is the game, is the game still going on? Is the game not over? 
and then in, then we're going to go inside of those curly braces, and then we're going to run this test. And here we have an and notice we have an else. So if our score is equal to 100, set game over to 1, right? So that means game over is now true. True and 1 are kind of equivalent. Um, so the game is now over. Print congratulations, you've completed this adventure. Type quit to quit. Okay. Otherwise, print congratulations, you've escaped but don't have a full score. And then it's going to keep printing that out as long as we're at the top of the hill. Um, so, uh, because notice we're not setting game over to, to, um, to true. So the game, we're not setting the game over till true until the player is at top of hill and the player has a full score. So when you put if statements inside of other if store statements, you're having the effect of anding them together. So in order to get here into the inside, you have to be at the top of hill and game over has to be zero and score has to be 100. So that's that's why these if statements are inside each other. You, you, when you put them inside each other, you're effectively anding them together. Um, so uh, what is this code right here? Well, this is part of an event I've added called game over. Oops. So game over is an event. Events are run after every command that the user enters. So if the user enters a valid command, um, the command is handled, and then the events are run. These update the state of the game after every turn. Um, and they allow you to change the um, change the the setup of the world or mani manipulate the game world. Uh, here's another one: no light death. That's the name of a of, of a, a function I added here or an event I added. And here it just says if turns without light equals four, print crash. The caverns collapse. This is what happens. You explore without a light source. Let's try this adventure again. And then what we do is we put the player back at this at a convenient location where the player can restart the game. We're putting the player back on the dirt road. We're putting the flashlight on the dirt road. So the player is now uh, back at the start, but there's a flashlight there, so the player doesn't have that light source puzzle again. And then we call look, and then look is gonna print out the description um, of that room to the player, right? So here's an example of, um, we're testing for a condition to identify, is the, game, is the game in a winnable state? Or has the player just sort of gone down some hopeless dead end? Okay, kill the player, put the player back in a position where the player is now in a, um, in a good spot to to successfully retry the game so that's an example of how this stuff gets used so the events are run after every turn uh, and then in another video i'm going to show you how to make functions functions the, the coding works exactly the same way the functions are used to respond to particular sentences um, so um, events get run every turn sentences get run or functions are called in response to particular commands being entered in by the user. So that's how that all ties together. Oh, and the one last thing, here's the variables tab. Here are the built-in variables, but you can notice here that I've added my own. So here I have one called got gold, burned leaves, battery life, tree down, lock picked, right? So I'm I'm just using, I've got vari my own variables here to track the state of the game. Has the player found the gold? Has the player burned the leaves? Uh, has the player knocked the tree down? Has the player picked the lock, right? And that, um, uh, so, that's what I'm that and that actually factors into the scoring so I can say if the players pick the lock uh, I mean, when the player picks the lock add 20 to the score and then set the lock picked variable to true so I don't give the player another 20 points if they try to pick the lock again so there you go these are the built-in variables these are variables I have added myself so um, I will definitely um, We've a test project out there, um, this, this test project out on, on the T drive, and you can open this thing up and go in and, and look at it and see. Um, the, be the best way to get it, the handle on this thing is just to look at the co code that I've already written, and you'll, you'll see um, how it works. There's, it's really easy to figure out. You can just figure out if this, do that. Otherwise, do something else. You are in good shape. All right. Well, thank you for uh, your patience if you're still here, and if you have any questions on how to get this to work, uh, just ask.